country than that. Now, there are a couple of components to this. Part of the responsibility for controlling these costs falls on our colleges and universities. Some of them are stepping up. Public institutions like the University of Maryland, University of North Carolina, some private institutions like Cornell, they're all finding ways to combat rising tuition without compromising on quality. And I know that your president is looking at some of these same approaches to make sure that the actual costs of college are going down. I want to challenge every university and college president to get a handle on spiraling costs. So university administrators need to do more to make college more affordable, but, but we as a nation have to do more as well. So that's why we fought so hard to win a battle that had been going on in Washington for years. And it had to do with the federal student loan program. See, under the old system, we'd pay banks and financial companies billions of dollars in subsidies to act as middlemen. See, these loans were guaranteed by the federal government, but we'd still pass them through banks, and they'd take out billions of dollars in profits. So it was a, a good deal for them, but it wasn't a very good deal for you. And because these special interests were so powerful, this boondoggle survived year after year, Congress after Congress. This year, we said enough is enough. We said... We said we could not afford to continue subsidizing special interests to the tunes of billions of dollars a year at the expense of taxpayers and of students. So we went to battle against the lobbyists and a minority party that was united in their support of this outrageous status quo. In Texas, I am here to report that we won. We won. So, as a result, instead of handing over $60 billion in subsidies to big banks and financial institutions over the next decade, we're redirecting that money to you to make college more affordable for nearly 8 million students and families across this country. 8 million students will get more help from financial aid because of these changes. We're tripling how much we're investing in the largest college tax credit for our middle class families. And thanks to Austin's own Lloyd Doggett, that tax credit is now worth $2,500 a year for two years of college. And we want to make it permanent so it's worth $10,000 over four years of college. $10,000. And because the value of Pell Grants has fallen as the cost of college keeps going up, the cap on how much Pell Grants are worth we, we, we have decided to offer more support for the future so the value of Pell Grants don't erode with inflation, they keep up with inflation. And we're also making loan repayments more manageable for over one million more students in the coming years so students at UT Austin and across this country don't graduate with massive loan payments each month. All right, that's, we're working on that right now. Now, I should mention, by the way, we're also making information more widely available about college costs and completion rates so you can make good decisions. You can comparison shop. And we're simplifying financial aid forms by eliminating dozens of unnecessary questions. You should not have to take you should not have to have a PhD to apply for financial aid. You shouldn't have to do it. I'm a, I, I want a bunch of you to get PhDs. Don't get me wrong. I just don't want you to have to do it for your financial aid form. So if you're married, for example, you don't need to answer questions anymore about how much money your parents have made. If you've lived in the same place for at least five years, you don't need to answer questions about your place of residency. 
Soon, you'll no longer need to submit information you've already provided on your taxes. And that's part of the reason why we've seen a 20 percent jump in financial aid applications, because we're going to make it easier and make the system more accessible. So college, so college affordability is the first part of the strategy that we're pursuing. The second part is making sure that the education being offered to our college students, especially, by the way, our students at community colleges, is it, that, that it's preparing them to graduate ready for a career. See, institutions like UT are essential to our future. But community colleges are too. They are great, underappreciated assets that we have to value and we have to support. So, so that's why we're upgrading our community colleges by, by tying the skills taught in our classrooms to the needs of local businesses in the growth sectors of our economy. And we're giving companies an assurance that the workers they hire will be up to the job. We're giving students the best chance to succeed. We're also that way giving America the best chance to thrive and to prosper. And that's why we're also reinvesting in our HBCUs and Hispanic serving institutions. Like Houston Tillerson and St. Edwards. The third part of our strategy is making sure every student completes their course of studies. Now, I want everybody to, to, to think about this. Over a third of America's college students and over half of our minority students don't earn a degree even after six years. So we don't just need to open the doors of college to more Americans. We need to make sure they stick with it through graduation. That is critical. And that means, that means looking for some of the best models out there. Uh, there are community colleges like Tennessee's Cleveland State that are redesigning remedial math courses and boosting not only student achievement but also graduation rates. And we ought to make a significant investment to help other states pick up on some of these models. So we've got to lift graduation rates. We've got to prepare our graduates to succeed in this economy. We've got to make college more affordable. That's how we'll put a higher education within reach for anybody who's willing to work for it. That's how we'll reach our goal of once again leading the world in college graduation rates by the end of this decade. That's how we'll lead the global economy in this century just like we did in the last century.